Well, good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome each one of you to our Christmas program this morning. Thank you so much for coming. And also would like to welcome those of you who are joining us uh, live stream this morning, or maybe you're watching this particular program on 3ABN. We hope that you will be richly blessed by our program today. Our program today is entitled, Come Emmanuel. We're going to be taking a look at the Christmas story, the story of the birth of Christ. And I like doing that every year, don't you? Amen. We like taking this time. In fact, I like this time of year where families get together, friends get together. We're not able to do that as much as what we would like to uh, this year. But uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity that we have to get together at least a little bit and think about the blessings that God has given to us. So as we remember the story of the birth of Christ today, our heart's prayer is that you would be touched and drawn closer to him. Will you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, we ask thy blessing as we take time to praise your name for sending your only begotten Son to this earth to show us your love and to redeem us from sin. As we remember these things, Lord, we ask that you would draw near and strengthen us and bless us. In the worthy and precious name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen. Amen. stars 
Longing for a savior, a hopeless world would wait. Sin demanded justice at a price we could not pay. 
but God displayed his mercy, the greatest gift of love. When we could not reach heaven, heaven came to us. He made a way in a manger, a way through the sun, Messiah. For a time had begun For God so loved this world Though he knew what love would cost He made a way in a manger To make a way to the cross In Bethlehem a stable became a throne of grace as God himself our Savior drew near to take our place his mother smiled in wonder the shepherd stood in awe the time had begun for God so loved this world though he knew what love would cost he made a way in a manger to make a way to the cross he is the life who died on Time. 
In a place where midnight skies were clear So long ago, so far The little towns with lace were still Beneath the silent stars A world so different from our own Where the Son of God was born The light and life of every soul wherever we are if we seek the light when peace is hard to find he'll send a silent night and touch our ears so we can hear an angel voice and in the darkest time star still shines Now the lights we hang obscure the sky The clamor stills the song We miss the calm and quiet nights Filled with wandering hearts and all the while the risen Lord freely gives us so much more. The peace on earth we're looking for has been here all along. If we seek the light, when peace is hard to find, He'll send us silent night. touch our ears so we can hear an angel voice and in the darkest times he will lift our eyes to see the stars still shine he will lift our eyes to see the 
And the story of that star that shone is recorded in Matthew chapter 2. I would like you to open your Bibles there this morning. Matthew chapter 2. And follow along with me. I would like to read the story of the birth of Christ. Matthew chapter 2, starting with verse number 1. The Bible says... Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, and what is the question? Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was, what was Herod? The Bible says he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and do what? And worship him. When they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And wise men still do that. Amen. They fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Amen. 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 As we read the Christmas story from Scripture, one of the things that we see is that as soon as Christ was born, there was a lot of activity that took place. A stir begins. What begins? A stir begins as soon as Christ is born. He has not spoken a word. He has not worked a miracle. He has not proclaimed a single doctrine yet. But when Jesus is born, although you hear nothing but infant cries, see nothing but infant weakness, his influence is made manifest upon the world. When Jesus is born, the Bible says, wise men came from the east and worshipped him. There is infinite power even in an infant Savior. Jesus of Nazareth is so potent a factor in the world that no sooner is he there in his utmost weakness than he begins to reign. He is the newborn king. Amen. 
And before he mounts the throne, what happens? Friends bring him gifts, and enemies plan his death. A stir begins as soon as Christ is born. And that is still true today. When he is born in a small village, anywhere in the world, a stir begins. When Christ is born in a large city, a stir begins. When he is born in the heart of a sinner, amen, a stir begins. Christ promises to be with us. The hope of glory draws near and a sacred and holy revolution begins and commences within us. When a church opens up for the first time in a town, a stir begins. When the Word of God is opened, when a Bible study in the home begins, when giving away a sacred piece of literature takes place, it makes a stir. Somebody and someone is affected by the fact that Christ has come. He cannot be hid. So when Christ is born, when Christ is only feebly preached, when Christ is but stammered out, a great result comes from even that. And oh, that the Lord Jesus might be here today. Amen. And I believe he is. Even, it is, if, even if it is but as a newborn in some heart today, or in some heart of those of you who are watching today, even if Christ comes as newborn in our hearts and our minds today, what a stir he will make. And the Bible says that when Jesus was born, Wise men came from where? From the east. We don't know. The text doesn't describe clearly how far from the east they came. But we believe that they probably came from the eastern edge of Persia or possibly even as far as India or China. And they came. They were... They were Afar off, but they came very near. They ended up in the direct presence of that little babe that was born in Bethlehem. And they gave their rich gifts and they worshiped him. There were those that were afar off. What were they? Far off, who came near. But I want you to also notice in the story. They came to, first they came to, not Bethlehem, but where'd they come? They came to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, which is only five miles from Bethlehem, they came to Jerusalem, and in Jerusalem they asked the question, what was the question? Where is he that has been born king of the Jews? And what was the response of those in Jerusalem? Yeah, the text says that they were troubled by the question. And that's amazing, isn't it? Those who were near, only five miles away, those who were near were far off. And I'd like us to consider that thought the last few minutes that we have in our worship together. Where are we today when it comes to Christ? The wonderful story of how Christ was born. God sent His only begotten Son to show us the love of the Father and to redeem us from sin. And He sent Christ as a little babe in Bethlehem's manger. And He grew to be a man. He taught the principles of God's kingdom so that we would know of God's love and His plan to redeem us. 
He died on a cruel cross, rose again, ascended to his Father in heaven. And the book of Hebrews tells us he sits at the right hand of God in heavenly places for you and for me. And he's, he's in terms of distance, he's afar off. But the good news is, is that through faith, we can draw near. And he has even promised to his last day church. He said to a church called Laodicea one day, he says, Behold, I stand where? I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come where? Into him <laughs> and will sup with him and he with me. And so Christ has always, God has always desired to be near. The question is, Christ providing the way to be near, are we near or are we afar off? These wise men that came from the east, how do you suppose they knew that a king would be born in the land of Judah, the people of the Jews, and this king would rule the world. How do you suppose they knew that information? Yeah, it was prophesied, wasn't it? By the prophet Balaam. And these wise men were men that studied ancient literature. And the ancient scrolls of the Hebrews there were copies of them. That was the only type of literature available at that time that would give that kind of information. And so what drew them near? They had been studying. We would say today, they had been studying their Bibles. And they believed. And when they saw the sign in the heavens, they followed and obeyed at all costs. That long distance traveling west. They could look to the north and see the Himalayan and Karakoram ranges. They continued on up into Asia Minor and then hung a left down south into the land of Judah. And they met the king. Those who were far off came near because they believed God and His Word. Amen. But those that were near, you know, the king... You know, they come to King Herod, and King Herod is all upset about it. The people in Jerusalem are upset about it. A new king? That could, Herod's not going to like that. So they come to Herod. Herod then asks the church leaders, these are the scribes and the Pharisees, where is he to be born? And did they have the answer? Yes. They quoted verbatim from Micah chapter 5. Thou Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you be little in the land of, of Judah, yet out of you shall come this one. You know? So they knew, they knew the word of God. And so the ones who knew the word of God and who had the answers to the questions, they were near, but guess what? They wouldn't even travel the five miles to Bethlehem and fall down and worship the Christ child. They had the word of God. They understood the doctrines of scripture. They were aware of its prophecies and its commands, and that's where it sat. It did not become a part of them. And so they were what? Afar off. So where are you at today? I don't want to be afar off to you. I want to understand God's word. I want to believe God's word. And I want to obey God's word. Amen. And have the story of Christ and all he's done be in my life and in my heart. And if that is the case, when he comes again, which I believe is soon, he will bless us tremendously.